Sunday nights for a guitar player. Um, any guitar players, if anything at all, they want to know about that I could possibly, not definitely, possibly help you out with. Anything you want to know? Uh, Andre Gill, what's up? Sunday nights are nights for guitar playing. Monday morning, yes. I will I will personally adjust all of my time stamping for you so that it, it's more appropriate for your for your locale. Let me let me make sure I do that. Um, it's kind of snotty, but you know what I mean. The intro of Heartbreak Heart Heartbreak Warfare is one of those things that's kind of hard to do on a guitar that doesn't have the gear that was that it was written on and it's one of those songs where if I play it for you without it it would just make you angry because you realize I wasn't really working hard enough on that song um, but yeah I sit I find a little quiet area and uh, I plug in and I just I I'm not even really playing right now to try to make a song I'm playing sound stuff out it's like a calculator you know it's like a music calculator and as long as I know where my ear wants to take the bass line of something then I can sort of just compose through things as long as you know what you kind of want to do next like last night I went uh, if I'm in C to see ba ba da -dum. section.
Um, is that loud enough? Because I'm in a hotel. I'm going to have to be kind of quiet. I'm no Keith Richards in a hotel. No Keith Richards, 1970. Um, that's enough. So I think I've shown the... Um, I think I've shown those bands, those micro bands. But I bet I love no. You know? Like a... Uh, <laughs> it's hard when you do like five times in a row. You start losing, stop losing the, you start losing the perspective of things. Yeah. Two today I was messing around but we can change the key too like these are called double stops when you play two notes at a time like you hear guitar players if you're in um, pick D right you hear that's just fretting two notes at the same time with you know you might you're like a beginner guitar player just kind of do all that you can actually pull it in a way that gives you uh, <laughs> you can pull that to a third it's kind of a pedal stealish thing When you pull one a little harder than the next one, guitar players, try that. Try that shit. Yeah. I'm not even do So again, like if you start doing it too much outside of the song context, it starts getting all yeah. Also, throw that shit up a half note. Like, everyone was playing in the box, just break the box up. Like, if you're in D. So you're always going, every, every guitar player knows, right? But throw it up a... So the, I'm just trying to get, like my ears are tired. I'm 40, I've been playing guitar since I was 13, so my ears are dug in by certain things that I don't want to hear anymore. I don't, I don't get angry if I hear them, but I'm trying to create things that are inside of the grooves that have been dug into my ears. And we listen to back to those old great singers, old great blues singers. Listen to Aretha Franklin uh, sing. It's what you would call by ultra-modern standards pitchy, but no, 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 oh dear, no. Um, when they're when they're slightly sharp, that that's where the emotion comes from, you know. Won't you tell me the reason why? Uh, won't you tell me the reason why? 
you know, won't you tell me the reason why that tail is not, won't you tell, it's won't you tell. And those are pitches way in between these frets, which only work in half steps, right? So that's the fun shit, right, for me right now is, is like Jimmy Vaughn, of course, is like super masterful at it, especially vocally. Um, okay, sorry, I said you could ask me questions and I wasn't reading the... Uh... It's all about emotion, Aaron, that is correct. But it's all about intention as well. Intention. Learning the guitar, I said this the other day, learning guitar is not as hard as people think. Uh, it's one of those minute to learn, lifetime to master things. Because where I'm trying to get to now, sorry, that's from food that I ate earlier. Um, just having to describe what a burp is, that's from food that I had earlier. Um, where I'm at now is I sit and I practice intention. So what does that mean? It means like, we all know how to talk. We know a lot of words. And I'm super guilty of this. Go around using them just because we know them. But if you talk from the heart and your intention is real, you don't need to use the world's biggest words. Like, you complete me are not collegiate level words. They're just really great use of language for intentions. You know, it, really, it has a full intent to it. So like, I can actually mix this with, with dead guitar because someone just asked about dead guitar. So what, you, what, what, I, what I practice doing, and it's much more of a mental practice, and I, I cannot stress enough for other guitar players to practice doing this, is practice thinking from the idea first instead of what the guitar offers you. Get out of the geometry. It's not whack-a-mole. Like just because they're here, just like you know words, doesn't mean you just start mashing them. You can, just like, it's fun to freestyle, it's fun to come up with ideas, it's fun to riff with your friends. But in terms of like coming up with statements on the guitar, for me, it's not looking at this based on what do I know scale-wise. Uh, so, so I'll show you. Like, sometimes I'll just sit down and go, we'll pick A, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll just go, I'll, I'll make this up. But in my head, I'm keeping time and I'm hearing a certain, uh, rhythmic bed and, and a harmonic bed so that I don't have to overplay on the guitar and I just focus in Fine motif. 
first thing I played. Swam, we swam out past the buoys because we were in A, and you just keep swimming and exploring and tracking in your brain what works and what doesn't, and you get so much more, I feel like, out of, mm, 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 mm. and don't use the guitar as this full bore thing to just bang out as much guitar music as you can bang out, you know what I mean? Um, what's your take on Afroman? No, no developed take. Can you explain the right hand strumming boogie? Yeah, absolutely. Good question. So, um, the right hand thing is like, it's not really, I can't boogie as hard with a pick as without a pick. So, so it's like, and it can be any, it can be any groove you want it to be. That's a little too straight. It's almost circular. So if you, you know, the, the pride and joy thing is. And it's as much about the left hand as it is the right hand. So the right hand, you can, you know. But it's really about deadening, basically, you're activating the string by plucking it, but you're also activating the note by fretting it. So a lot of people only play with the right hand in mind. So you're playing with the right hand, you just fret this, you know, so you'd be going. And that's cool too, but if you want to go. Notice I'm not, I'm only playing the string. huge thing is to is to hit on and on. it's like it's too they kind of both do the same thing the right hand and the left hand are both contributing to the rhythm and you can get into drummers who shuffle a certain way um i sort of have to fall into those really cool grooves but one of the ones i like the most which came from me just playing in my room was queen of california this there yet in the groove you really have to keep working it and working it so let's keep going until we get there Now, 
I'm missing the downbeat. Right? This is your kick drum, and that's sort of your snare drum. You could say that the rakes are sort of, well, I'm not going to get too heady about it, but Well, you should probably practice with a metronome and just get It's so okay to go back to get it if you've screwed up. Go back to get it a so, hundred times so you get it. I want to go. Don't do it. Don't right. I got it. Not yet. Almost. So we'll move on. sort of burning it out and I don't have it like I used to. Uh, and I'll just move on to something else because uh, how does rhythm and lead guitars should all work together? Uh, that's Every band is different. That's how you get the different band sound is how they interact. Um, <laughs> almost as good as unboxing. How did I move from open chords to scales and improvising? That is a fantastic question. So open chords are chords where basically you're playing down here and you're using the nut of the guitar to, to establish the you know the uh, the lowest the lowest note of each string you're not fretting. So you're basically that's open, right? And D has an open D, and you're fretting out here. But eventually you move to something called bar chords. So this right here is the nut that dictates like this is where the note begins on a guitar. So if you're playing an E. That's open, that's open, that's open. So basically, you play an F this way, or that's a bar chord. Basically, this finger's acting like that is, and just up. So that's where guitar is fairly easy compared to piano, because it's completely transposable. So if you learn something in one key, you can play it in any key you want, because the, the, the relative um, shapes don't change as you move up and down. So it's, to answer your question, you have to get finger strength to be able to play in the first place and, and develop calluses. That that wouldn't even be a thing, although you could if you wanted to. But that's the this is the Mel Bay chord. That only involves pressing three strings down. Why? Because these open strings are too, that, that that takes care of it. But if you want to play that up here, it's really or this is the approach. To be super technical about it. Wait, that's not it. Well, how would I be playing a Oh, I can't do it that way. Never mind. Okay, so this would be like a, an A. And that's a B. And 
that's a C sharp, and that's a D. So there, once you learn it, you can move it around. Then getting into solos, you've established understanding the roots if you know that that's G and that's A. Basically, you're learning all the notes for each fret on the low E, and you move out from there. But you know that's a G and that's an A, the same shape. That's a G minor, you can do this one. A minor, same shape. So you, so if you learn a shape in one key, you can play it in any key. And then you take the blues scale and the pentatonic scale stuff, and you can understand the root. So that's A, you're right. Then you, then you plug in what a pentatonic scale is. So this is always A, that was B. that different than B. So there you go. That was just, but that takes a really long time to play with that finger and not have it hurt. It will hurt and you will have lines through it or you look like an egg slicer here and you just learn to, to be all right with it. Um, and then I play with a pick and hide it in here as I play. So to see me do do the picks actually there so I can go so I want to show you where I switch It's okay to mess up because you don't know where you are anyway. So have fun with it. Um, 27 years of playing, still learning new techniques, 100%, all the time, all the time. And, and, and right now it's um, microtonal stuff and um, yeah, and bend the first finger bends. You know, you always think of like if we're an A. People always think of that as like, you can't, this is the ground, you can't go lower than that. That's actually a, a really big tip for guitar players. Like, when you learn the pentatonic scale, the one note that's the, the one fret that's the same on all of them is this. They're all. So you just grow up thinking you just can't do anything with that. These are the ones you bend. And you bend, bend. But you got. So listen to that. Right? So that's the thing. And that this is the BB King. Won't you tell me the reason why? That's interesting. I want to play the one band I don't like the most. And so here's here's the shit that I want to talk to you about. So the only reason that certain things happen on a guitar musically is because they're there shape-wise. And I've gone through my playing and I've gone through the music I listen to, and it's not a bad thing, it's a preference, but the guitar in its the science of it has sort of led it into a certain sound in terms of what people play on it. Not always because it's what they want to say, but it's because it's the shape that's available to them on the guitar. And it has inspired, and I think it's a good thing, it's inspired guitar players to come up with ways of playing things based on where they're available to you. So there are these things, they're like guitar-specific notes that I don't even think people know they don't love as much as they do. 
but it's just there and it's become part of the vocabulary. And the one I hate, even in my own playing, and I did it only one time. You could actually run it back and go, Mayor's right, he did it one time. And I'll do it every once in a while. If you're an A, right, A, it's, da -da -da. and it's, it's, it happens in music, but on a guitar, I just don't like it. And I also don't like people hit it too hard. But it's usually, it's kind of a fun thing to do in your hand, but it's not that cool to listen to. I just don't like it. That is a guitar only thing. You wouldn't, on a, on a piano, you wouldn't think to do that, or you can't bend it on a piano, but even vocally, you know, you can do it, you know, sometimes, but it becomes like a cliche, you know. Never made me happy. I'm not knocking anybody who does it. I'm just saying, investigate everything you play and find out, is it because it's a note you want to play or is it because it's in the jungle gym and it's fun to climb around and, and, and you're just doing it because it's there. That's what I'm trying to take out. So, check this out. This is what you should be playing. This is how you should be playing guitar. feel so good and I'm not saying that I'm not trying to be like Bob Ross just being like but trees that like you can do this at home but whatever level you're at as a guitar player sit and just choose and play your choices here first instead and it's always fun I'll still riff around play play what's up here for like try to come up with what it is you want to do it's like Photoshop it's like you might you could be good at Photoshop but if you don't know what picture you want to see what what's Photoshop for so you start developing that sense of what your vision for your song, the next thing you want to hear is, and learning the guitar that way, or learning whatever instrument you have that way. Also, I may be completely wrong in that I'm uh, sort of forcing my age on other people, and you're still at the age where you just want to keep crushing, and I'm all for it. But work this in as a thought process every once in a while. With what you learn, learn to implement it in your own way. Learn the function of a scale, and then just sit, and slow, and even if it's with a metronome. I'm playing music right now. As long as you're feeling that, you train yourself to feel that without having to burn, 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 burn all the time, it'll be, you'll just be so much of a better player for it. And that's all, I, that's what I was doing before I signed on was to practice that stuff. I'm using a Princeton reverb that's under a sink. Um, so anyway, I thought that would be fun to share with you. Um, borrowing well-known melodies while improvising, totally cool. Just, some are tacky, you know? Um, Am I trying to think inside the scale? No. I don't think even about the scale anymore, really. Um, yeah, just implement it. Imp when you learn something, no matter what it is in life, if you learn how something works, start f slotting it into your brain and how, how you want to express yourself with it, that's all. 
But you still have to practice. See, here, here's the trade-off. You still have to practice. So I'm not telling you don't practice pentatonic scales. Practice, 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 play and play and play. But wouldn't it be fun at the end of a practice day to give yourself a five-minute timer, 10-minute timer, however long you want to just meditate inside of what you know? Even if what you know is you've been playing for three months, you just know the pentatonic scale and you're just starting to learn how to bend up to the note a little bit. Just cl narrow down your focus so that's what you do for five or ten minutes and say something with it and learn to implement it in a way that is a very expressive and isn't about playing guitar, it's about playing music for a minute. You'll feel, you'll go to bed so happy. You'll go to bed so happy. And I'm going to go to bed so happy. Not now. I'll play some more guitar and I'm going to go to bed happy. And that was Sunday night guitar lessons. And I think the world of you all, and I will talk to you later. And thanks for listening and watching. Okay, bye. Have a great week.